And now we have CBS News medical contributor, Dr. Celine Gounder, here in Studio 57 with me to break down some of these health and safety concerns of Hurricane Milton. Of course, Dr. Gounder, also a senior fellow and editor at large for public health at the Kaiser Family Foundation. Um, you and I have been talking off camera about how big of a public health concern this is. And as a doctor, if you had a patient potentially in the path of a hurricane, what would your biggest concerns be? Well, there are two particular patient populations I'd be especially worried about. People who have uh, need to be on dialysis. Dialysis requires water, power, uh, open facilities. And these are people who generally get dialysis three times a week. So even a short, brief uh, disruption in that can be life-threatening. And then secondly, diabetics. So diabetics, their insulin might need to be stored in a fridge. You may not have power for your refrigerator in that setting. So these are the populations where even a couple hours, a couple days can have a huge impact on their health. I spoke with someone um, after Helene who, um, who was reliant on oxygen. And her, when her power was out, that was problematic mm -hmm. for her. She was in the Asheville area. Luckily, that power was restored. But um, all of these are such major concerns. I'm, I'm wondering, Celine, um, what are some, how, how do people deal with this? Because especially if you're packing, if you're packing up your family and you're, you're trying to get to safety, dialysis might not be the, the thing that's immediately on your mind or, or figuring out how you're going to make your oxygen yeah. uh, if your power goes out. Well, these are the kinds of things that people really should be thinking about ahead of time before you're in the middle of a crisis. So for example, after Hurricane Sandy, I, myself, from my own household, have a to-go bag that is in the closet, has been there ever since Hurricane Sandy. Um, I periodically just check to make sure I have what I need, but, that, you know, change of clothes, a first aid kit, having um, flashlights, lanterns, uh, medications ready if you need to run out the door. Uh, kind of like what you might do when you're pregnant and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to have to deliver that any pregnancy moment. go bag, yes. Exactly. You know, having that same kind of preparation, not at the last minute, but in advance. What are some of the biggest dangers or health concerns that people might not be thinking about right now who are in the storm's path? Well, water, and it's not just drinking water or water to wash your hands or bathe in, but it's also what happens with the flood water. So think about it. The flood waters are flooding everything, everything from commercial and industrial sites, agricultural sites, homes and their garages. And so you have a mix of, well, sewage, uh, animal waste, all kinds of chemicals, uh, things that might be plugged into electricity, power lines, all of these things in the water, and all kinds of debris on which you could injure yourself. And so one of the things that's really underappreciated is if you're wading into that flood water, not only could you injure yourself, but then get exposed to these toxic chemicals, to bacteria. Uh, this can eventually cause not only infections, but lead to sepsis, which is life-threatening. If you can, stay away from those situations. Um, I, I'm still amazed at the number of deaths uh, from Hurricane Helene. When we also look at other hurricanes, like Hurricane Maria killed about 3,000 people in Puerto Rico in 2017. What do we learn from all of these storms that we go through? Well, first of all, it takes a while to restore things back to normal. Some people in Puerto Rico were, were without electricity for a year. Uh, and so you can imagine how disruptive that is, again, for everything from cooking and storing your food to refrigerating your medications, your insulin. Um, but on top of that, what we saw with Hurricane Maria is the level of desperation, the mental health impacts. And we saw suicides really shoot up after the hurricane. And that has a long tail to it as people are trying to recover, recover their jobs, their livelihood, their homes. All right. Dr. Celine Gounder, thank you so much for being here with us. Appreciate you.